northern Mexico, on the western edge of the Sierra Madre Mountains, my friends and I are continuing our pursuit of the ever elusive desert whitetails. As soon as they stop, either stop moving or you put your binos down, they're gone. So far on this trip, we've experienced the wild desert temperature fluctuations, learned just how tough it is to actually locate these deer in the glass, and seen the impossible number of nasal bots one deer throw can hold. Imagine having those inside your nose, like, blah. All that, and we haven't even hit the trailhead. Today was the first day of a five-day backpack hunt. I took my friends Travis Vernier and Michael Orlan deep into the interior of Mexico on their first ever desert whitetail hunt. And they got the buck just across Canada. Mike was fortunate enough to get his buck on our very first morning of hunting. Never thought I would be, I would get my first deer in Mexico. Now that we've processed the deer, it's midday and it's time to load up our packs and hike our butts up the mountain to go set up camp. Now as we hike up the mountain, our plan for the morning is to get up on a long finger ridge with the commanding view of the Mesquite Flats not far from where we'll be setting up our camp. Oh, Trav, let's see what kind of horseshoe skills you got up here. You know what, I might be a little rusty. Back in my day, I used to throw the whole horse, not just the shoe. <laughs> my God. You can see forever. Yeah. This ranch that we're on right here is 7,000 hectares, which is seven kilometers by seven kilometers. It is an absolute giant piece of land. And there's a whole pile of roads on that third of it over there, on the other side of where the lodge is. But on this side, two thirds of the entire ranch, nobody hunts here, period. They allow seven hunters in here every year. And last year we were the only hunters back here and this year we're the only hunters back here. Everyone else hunts the roads. So last year, if you guys watched our coos episodes, you'll see that I passed up on what I now know is probably a buck of a lifetime. <laughs> so this year, we're gonna be at glassing for that guy and I'm really hoping that we can pick him up again and get him because he's an actual booner buck. These guys here who are at the camp all watched and they all said, you're an absolute idiot for not shooting that deer. <laughs> so we won't make that mistake again. For me, this is unreal. I, it's my first time in Mexico, my third time leaving Canada. And I'm in one of the nicest places in Mexico, probably. <laughs> yeah. One of the most untouched places, I don't know. But I can't wait to start laying eyes on some of these hills and really start glassing and picking things apart. This area, it is the winter, so we're probably not gonna see any, but this, there's no floor in this tent. So there's scorpions here, rattlesnakes here, there's black recluses, freaking a whole bunch of other crazy spiders, I don't know, tarantulas maybe, I think. And uh, 
what we decided to do instead of just sleeping right on the ground because at nighttime our body heat will be in there there'll be some heat in the ground and animals might just want to come sneak in and say hello so we bought ourselves a ground tarp that's significantly bigger than the tent and it's, we're going to put it up the walls as best as we can so if anything does come in it's going to go underneath our tarp not inside It's also pretty cool down here, seeing all these javelina. They're just like running around down there and they're like eating around or eating, I'm not sure, like the piles of cow shit that are down there. Like big black clumps and they're just like digging through it. I don't know if there's like worms or bugs in there that they like, but they seem to be pretty attracted to the cow patties. All right, so we got a, another doe down here. She's moving fast, but it looks like a hot doe. So she's just walking. She gets underneath one of these big trees that are down there with lots of foliage. She stops, scrapes the ground a bit, and then urinates in it. So it looks like that's the fourth one that she's done now within 10 minutes. Um, and this right here, this kind of basin in front of us right now, we know it's got three does. And just behind us on this side, there's one more doe. But this one here is definitely the one showing the most sign of being not fired up here and ready to be bred. So it's good. It's pretty well last light now, but hopefully here in the morning, we should be able to come back here and see some bucks start falling around. Over the next few days, I'm really hoping that we're going to start seeing that rut sign light up and, and we're in a perfect spot for it. So all we got to do is sit, wait, and be patient and good things are going to happen. Got up this morning, it's just first light now. I put the glass up, started looking at ridge tops. Look down in the valley below us, and there's a nice buck. He's walking down valley, so let's like, let's, let's make some tracks and let's get down there. Okay, I'm gonna go pack up my spotter and stuff and get back here. Now this buck is in kind of a tricky spot because he's headed down valley and away from us. And if we go down there after him, we risk blowing him out completely. So the best we can do is hike over to the ridge and hope that he follows the does back in the range. All right, we're almost at the glass and knob here. We got a doe way at the back. She's coming in this way from the other valley. Then we got another doe just right here on the ridge. So it's a good sign there's at least a few does in here that should hold him in here. The doe that's on top of this ridge where the buck last was yeah. is at 375 right now. So I would preferably like him to be a tiny bit closer. I'm rock solid right on him right now. But it's a far shot. This rifle I'm not used to. Dude, right? If he stepped out right now, my crosshairs would be right on his vitals. Oh, he's stepping out right now. Okay. Ah, come on, come on. He's walking away. He's, uh, he's walking away and he's quartering away hard right now. I can't take that shot. Dang it. Dude, now he's gone down and done all. Now that 365 yard shot's just got a little bit further. Now he's got a bunch of brush in front of him. Is that probably four? It's probably a 400 now. 
uh, you're kind of touching my leg a little bit. Oh, sorry. It's all good. I just don't want something to happen while it's all good. I'll just get what if I play with the <laughs> That helps. Okay, he's walking. Oh, he come on. He's he's leaving again. He's going the other. He's gonna turn. He's gonna turn. He's following that doe, man. He's going up towards that doe. Okay. That doe is leaving. All right. Well, if he stands where that doe is, what's that doe at? That doe's probably 400, I would assume. 409 where the doe is, so it'd be better if he shot before that doe. 10 4. He's coming back. He's coming back? Yeah. Yeah, he's coming back in a week. Shit, where'd he go? Yeah, he's trotting back here. Whew. That's good. Okay, Mitch, you see him in the opening there? No. Yeah. One sec. He's broadside here. Same spot he was? No, just past. He's beside that door that's in the opening. Give me a quick range if you can. I'm, I'm sorry, but I have no idea where it is. So just past those boulders, uh, he's perfectly broadside right now. Like, how far did he come back? Like 20 no, yards? No, no, he's, he's in the second opening, closer to the... There's a doe standing in the opening. He's just to the left and down. Like, can you see with your eye? Yeah. Yeah, I could take the shot. So is he closer than he was the no, first time at no, the rock? No, no. So he's past the little dead mesquite yeah. tree? Yeah. He's past that dead mesquite tree uh, to the right and into that sunny clearing. Like, the ball. Oh shit, okay, got it. Okay. All right, give me a sec. Oh, uh, he's walking. Okay. But he's walking sideways, so. Okay, stopped. Yeah. We got him. That. I can't find him here. Come on. Break. I can't see him. All I could see is the doe. The doe is at 407. Okay, got him. All right, I'm gonna take a shot, guys. You are clear. Kill him. Oh, just over him. Okay, yeah, he stayed. He stayed. Come on, stop, stop, stop. <sighs> it's okay, Trav, it's okay. He, yeah. She's gonna she's gonna run around, he's gonna follow her. Okay. No, I don't okay, think. Trav, reload. I'm not gonna shoot anymore. What, yeah. He's out of range, man. No. He's aiming for the top of his back. I don't know how I shot over him. It's all good, Trav. It's all good. We'll figure it out. The morning ain't done. I just don't understand. I was rock solid on him. Hey, flinch. What did I do wrong? <sighs> we'll figure that out here soon. Now, fortunately for us, these were two clean misses. And just as quickly as the dust cloud settled around the buck's feet, he was back in pursuit of his beloved doe. We watched this buck chase the does for another hour until the sun got too hot and they were forced to bed up in the shadow of a big old mesquite. Oh, those two does and that buck now bedded down. We know where they are. We have a good plan. Now that the deer were comfortably bedded up for the day, this stalk was not going to be easy. Even easier than if that's what you're doing. Yeah. You don't even go. If you go here, there's a trail. You can hike out, but it's kind of loud, but it's a trail. Yeah. You can go out, you can follow this ridge. Oh, sweet. And then go down. Yeah. Trav had to scale down a 30 foot cliff and then make his way through a tangle of cat claw and sneak about 800 yards through the basin, which held six other deer that we knew of and about a dozen javelina. So to put it simply, his odds 
were slim at best. So here's the shitty part about our plan here. We got whatever, dozen javelinas down there, probably five or six does down there with one spike buck. And then we got past all of them. We gotta go past all of them to get to the two bedded does and the buck. Cheese and I decided to film from the top, keeping Trav's scent and noise on this stock at a bare bones minimum. But as usual in this scenario, this puts us in a predicament of having to use hand signals to communicate, which in this case was less than desirable. So Trav's doing all these crazy hand movements. She's doing this, 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 this. I, I don't know what all that means. Hey, damn it. There's gotta be a bedded buck in that drainage right now that we can't see. Cause we're on that other deer. That deer's bedded perfectly just where we said it would be. But he's not looking over there. He's looking down. So I think something's below him, but I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what is happening right now. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. He's taking off his pack and he's setting up his rifle. I don't know if he's gonna shoot from there or he's got another buck down there. I'm not sure. He's, he's looking straight down and he's got his rifle in his hand. Oh shit. I, I have no visibility as to what he sees, but I hope it's a cranker buck. And that other buck is still bedded over there, so it's definitely not that. He's, he's getting prone, he's getting set up. All right, I'm gonna move this on the other buck here. Okay, just gave Trav the thumbs up, we're good. Chad just whistled at us and put his hands over his head, so I'm pretty sure that means he just smoked him. But I can't confirm or deny that. Yeah, no. Okay, that doe's turning around and walking out of there, and that buck did not move, so he's got to be roasted behind that tree. Boom. All right. I guess it's time. Time to go fetch a buck. Yes! Now we got a day and a half to get me one. Tight timeline for a nice buck, so see what happens. Hopefully I can make her happen. The killer. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Good job. Good, good job. Yeah, awesome. I want to make it closer. But I got down to the river bottom, yeah. and right below me there's like 15 stink pigs just drinking water. I'm like, oh, I don't want to bust them out of there. And I looked up, there's a little doe. I don't know if you guys seen her take off. No. She took off towards them. I'm like, oh. So I got set up, and, uh, and then I couldn't see the vitals. I could see his head and neck perfectly. That's what I, I thought you were saying when you were doing yeah, this. Yeah, I'm like, I was like, does he see a different one or that one? Or? I, I have no idea. <laughs> but uh, did you guys get it on the big lens? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, we got sweet. It. Yeah. Sweet, I, I thought I turned the GoPro and I had it all on, press record. I put uh, my phone, record, that's good. GoPro wasn't recording. Classic GoPro. Classic Garbage. GoPro. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I think I put a good shot. He was kind of quartering away a little bit, uh, but uh, he was gonna go over the, I would have lost him. Yeah. If he would have went forward, I would have lost him from where I was. So I put the shot on him. He didn't go far, right? Just... Did you see him drop? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, we couldn't see him drop, but we right seen... by that by that rock in the middle of that tree, like between where he was bedded there, the two trees, where the doe were bedded and the buck. Yeah. Bed. He fell right behind that. I could kind of see him from here. Well, we just seen the doe walk over. <laughs> For what reason? I'm like, yeah, he's probably dead. <laughs> yeah. So. There's many reasons we spend so much time in the mountains, whether it's to get away 
to experience new places or to fill our freezers. But whatever the main intent was, there's one thing that always remains constant. And that is, in every walk in nature, there's always something to learn. In our lifelong quest of education, in all things wild. So this is a pretty cool hunt. I mean, it's always been on my bucket list. And I think the reason behind that is, so it's kind of a Western style hunting where you're looking over some vast open areas, uh, cliffy spots, you know, you're doing a lot of spot and stock glassing style hunting. If it wasn't for working for my Alpine carnivore, I don't think I would ever have this opportunity to come hunt these deer and see the country that I've just seen. It's my first time in Mexico, third time outside of Canada, and uh, it's just been such a journey and it's not even over yet. Next time on Alpine Carnivore. The doe got up, she started sprinting, and the buck was following the slower doe, the real big buck. We lost him. It's that one buck or no buck. I just might go home empty handed if we don't see him. Sonora Triple! <laughs>